Well, hey there, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to work on chapter nine. This one's going to be real short. There's only uh, two assigned ones. So we'll just go ahead and jump into it. And we'll draw it 4-4. Four, four. Mostly, you know, obviously at this point you can draw these quite easily. It's just uh, doing dimension editing. That's going to be a little different. <clears throat> so, uh, it's one tall. I guess it would have been easier to draw from the left. <clears throat> 0 0.75 over. 0.25 up. 0.5 over. 0.25 up. And close. Alright, so dimension is just like the uh, book has non-17 figure. So we'll start down here at the bottom left and do the 0.5. Let's change that um, precision to be two decimal. I'm going to see. I think it would fit. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. So, do that. And then we're going to slightly stagger the 0.25 here. Something like that. And we've got our 0.2 or 2.0 horribly placed right here. Obviously, it's not going to be exactly like the book, but since these are so big, I may scale it down once we get to repositioning. I think we will. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> so, because it's so small, our text height's kind of tough to see. Let's change it to, uh, hmm, let's say about half of that. So, 0.06. <clears throat> That means we'll need to change this as well. Okay, so that looks pretty close to how the book has it. So now that I've done that, I'm actually going to scale these, or move these back down a little bit so they're not poking out so far. Okay, so once you've got that, what I want you to do <coughs> is uh, just copy it straight down. Uh, you know about, let's go three inches down. Okay. It's kind of big, but it's fine. Uh, so now we can go ahead and reposition these dimensions. So let's move 0.5 from this arrow. We'll drag it to this arrow to align them. Um, what's funny is it actually deletes this dimension entirely, but... Could have just shifted it in line with the other ones as well and i do prefer to have an overall of course so then let's shift this guy it's roughly slightly above this top edge so i'll move this one out of the way grab this point and move it to about right here this is kind of one of those things where you're just adjusting it by eye to try to make uh the spacing from here to here equal to the spacing from here to here that seems pretty close uh, and actually, that's it for this exercise. So we'll go ahead and do the last one. Really easy chapter, needless to say. We'll start at 4 4. In case you're wondering, the reason I always choose there is migrating. That's where I start most of mine. <clears throat> okay, so 1 over, 3 up. We can go ahead and start closing the box. So the way they did it is very inconvenient, but you know, it's fine, I guess. So they did 0.84 down. One point eight down. Well, you know what? We can actually just draw looking at part B, obviously. So we'll just do that. Okay, so I take that back. Let's just do 0.5 down. I was gonna draw the circles and then move them, but since we're given that information, we might as well. 
just roll with it. Alright, so we have a half inch diameter circle for each of these. Okay, let's put in our center marks. Oh, let's change that layer. All right, so what we're given first and foremost is we have to dimension to the bottom quadrant on each of these. And we'll change our precision to be two units again. All right. Huh. This dimension's actually not even to the bottom, apparently. It's just randomly up here to the end of the center mark. If you're having problems with moving it, you may have to uh, you know, top in the actual value. That's what I just did. I moved it to the end point and I moved that point out of three. That's so random. Okay, so now we'll do 0.05 down from there. Again, in case you missed that, I'm grabbing the point. I'm moving down give it a direction, I'm saying the difference between 2.75 and 2.8, which is 0.25. Nope, that's bad math. <laughs> it's 0.05. Probably 0.05, I guess. Okay, 2.8. <clears throat> and then 3. All right, so we've got to put in our quantity here with this value. And they had theirs a little higher, so we'll try to match it the best we can. <clears throat> do remind or do remember though that you know you want to have polar tracking on when you're moving dimensions around most of the time. That way you can uh, freely position this. Otherwise, it's kind of locked into pretty linear locations. Okay, so. Once you've got that, put on a width, and you can copy this one. We'll paste it to the left or the right. Uh, how about let's do six inches? Perfect. Okay, so now we have this one. Let's just adjust. Have everything touch the center like I had to begin with. <laughs> So all you do is grab the end point and reposition. If you don't use a linear, it may not be this simple. That's why you have to know to use the right tool for the right job. Technically, we're going to take this a step further because I wasn't paying attention. And we're going to move these end points to the end of the center marks. You always want this little gap right here. And uh, yeah, I, I totally missed that. So. Make sure that on yours you don't have these overlaps. I didn't over here. So then, after that, let's reposition these. So we know that this guy should fit in here. They did over there. So then we can move this in a little bit to kind of match the book. I like to look at the arrows as I go, but sometimes the spacing doesn't work so well for vertical. It's like we would need it to be about right here. So it works there, but this three, because it's so close to the two and a half, it might not look great. <clears throat> yeah, see, it, it's all right, but it is a little close. I'm going to leave it. It's borderline. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's actually it for this one. So, uh, I'll take it easy.